Um, we're next going to hear from someone who has not spent their entire life in this landscape, uh, but calls herself a guest in the landscape because she is an immigrant to the U.S. Uh, I'm talking about Berta Gutierrez, who is uh, working also uh, so much, coordinating so much to protect this landscape as uh, part of her role uh, at the Conservation Lands Foundation. Come on up, Berta. As Kim said, my story begins really, really far away from the Mojave, really far. This, this, the intro, mystery. <laughs> really far from the Mojave in a very different landscape. Um, I was born in El Salvador in the middle of the um, 80s when the country was going through a war. And as you saw on the last one, I don't know, let me go back because I don't know if you can tell which one is me. Um, I learned to swim in the Pacific Ocean um, where my grandparents lived. And I used to um, just spend a lot of my time in parks, you know, chasing other kids or hiding from other kids um, between really tall pines. Um, the water in the Pacific in El Salvador is really warm compared to when you go to California and you kind of freeze. So my memories are filled with very different pictures. Um, you know, I have tropical nights, really hot, with really tall trees. I, was, uh, I grew up in the third floor of an apartment bu building. So it was either, you know, closing the windows because some cicadas were gonna come in and I was super afraid of them or having them wide open and just like listening to the night. And every now and then, you know, some cars and some honking going on around. Um, and I don't have that many pictures of my childhood. So what you're gonna be seeing at the beginning is some of the paintings that I have painted from those memories. Um, and just the countless hours that I spent outside. Um, so when I was 15, 16, sorry, um, my mom made the decision to move us, me and my sister, to the States. Um, and so we had to come here without knowing the language, without knowing the culture, without knowing the place. And at that point, without knowing anybody else apart from my family in the southern U.S. where we moved. Um, so it was a hard transition. First of all, I couldn't even go to McDonald's and order anything, because I'm like, what are they saying? Like, <laughs> apart from that it was another different language, there's, I don't know if you've ever been to the south, the southern accent is <laughs> something else. <laughs> so it was a hard transition, and that lasted several years. Um, I seek refuge in my family, in my art, in school, in painting the memories. Um, but it was still hard. And then I realized that what was missing is spending time in nature, spending time outside. So it took several years of me trying to do one thing and the other thing to try to feel like I belonged to the place before I felt like that. And it wasn't until I really started spending time outside hiking and, or just going to parks and going to you know, watch the meteor showers where I really started feeling like I belonged. I started to feel welcome. So years later when I decided to move to Southern Nevada, I knew that that's what I was going to do first before trying to do anything else. I'm like, let me go meet the desert. Let me see what's outside of, the, of downtown Las Vegas. Let me see what's outside of the strip. Um, and I started hiking and I immediately felt home. Um, and it was amazing. This is a picture that I took actually the first time that I went to Red Rock Canyon. 
I believe this, this one spot is now a parking lot that they expanded. <laughs> so, um, but it was amazing to find how a landscape that was completely foreign to me, completely different to what I grew up, um, and feel accepted and feel like I was home. Um, so spending time in nature is what made me feel that belonging. So finding home is something important for everybody, but especially when we as humans move around countries, we move around states, we move around different places. And the most important part of finding home and finding belonging is that that's when you create that connection where, that drives you to really wanting to protect and care for the lands that you're visiting. Now I have the honor of like, being able to work towards protecting different landscapes. And when I do what I do, and you know, sometimes you have to come up with, my job is all over the place. I have to sometimes write things or go take pictures or give tours. But every time I do and in everything that I do, what I keep in mind is my nieces and nephews and my nibblings and then their nibblings and then their nibblings after that. And how I want them to be able not only to have the option to go visit the landscapes, but also um, feel their responsibility to continue to taking care of them. I want them to feel welcome wherever they go and to have the option to go out there and be safe and learn from the landscapes. From, it doesn't matter where we go, if, we, if I ever move away from here, that's, you know, it's gonna still be my responsibility to continue taking care of place and doing whatever we can to continue protecting it. As Paul said, this is not just about us, it's about the future generations. So it is my responsibility and your responsibility as well to do everything that we can to pretend the la protect, to try to protect the landscapes as long as we have them. Avicuame is still a really intact landscape. And this is one of the largest Joshua trees that I've ever met. <laughs> if you had told me when I was little that I was gonna meet a Joshua, well, first of all, I didn't know what Joshua trees were. <laughs> let's, let's start with that. <laughs> but, I think there's amazement to find. There's, there's a lot of lessons that we can learn from nature, like Paul was saying. So I think it's worth it. This fight is worth it. And this, you know, I don't know if you got a chance to write a little postcard in the back of the room, but if you didn't, I encourage you to do it after that. And just even if you haven't been to the Avicuama landscape, just write something about how public lands are so important for the health of us, for the mental health, and just really to feel home and for our future generations. That's two of my nibblings. I have like 16 of them, <laughs> but <laughs> that's two of them. Um, so, you know, I hope that um, if you haven't had the chance to go visit Avicuame, that you can do it, but you do it in a way where you are open to learning what's there to learn in that landscape, because it's really worth it. Thank you.